This is literally the edge of Australia. Cape York in northern Queensland. It sits well within a broad band that circles the earth between the Tropic of Cancer in the north and the Tropic of Capricorn in the south. Countries within this band share similar characteristics, but with an important exception, screwworm fly. We don't have it, and we are the only continent in this region that doesn't have it. It's a parasite, and the exotic animal disease that most directly threatens Australia. Screwworm fly isn't fussy. It will infest anything warm-blooded and alive. That counts out reptiles and fish, but includes everything else, and that includes people. There are two types of screwworm fly. The New World screwworm fly, which inhabits Central and Southern America, and the Old World screwworm fly, which inhabits Central Africa, the Middle East, India and Southeast Asia. It is the Old World screwworm fly that poses the greatest risk to Australia. To the north of us is New Guinea. The screwworm fly is endemic to New Guinea and Torres Strait is dotted with islands like stepping stones that lead straight here. I believe that the risk and the chance of screwworm getting into Australia and becoming established is fairly high. Well, apart from island hopping, there's also a lot of trade between the islands and the Torres Strait and between New Guinea and Australia. And that is all part of the Torres Strait Agreement. So there is free travel between those two countries. Fortunately, the, the quarantine situation is, is good in that area, but there's still that risk that people or animals on board canoes or boats could be infested with screw and fly and get into Australia that way. Well, the most likely other source uh, one would imagine for screw and fly to get into Australia would be on livestock vessels that are coming back from parts of the world where screw and fly is present. Um, in recent years, there's been a great expansion of the live cattle export trade out of northern ports to um, Indonesia. Malaysia, the Philippines, and all of these areas are areas where screwworm fly is endemic. If screwworm fly does establish in the tropical region of Australia, that the climatic conditions would be suitable, at least in summer, for it to migrate further south, possibly into Victoria, and then in winter uh, regress uh, back to the, the northern areas. Uh, so potentially we're not looking at just a problem of tropical Australia, we're looking at a, a problem Australia-wide. Female screwworm that are ready to lay their eggs must seek a host, a warm-blooded animal with a suitable wound or some site where they can lay their eggs. And in the case of livestock at least, uh, a suitable site would be any sort of scratch or cut, any body orifice with a discharge, uh, any wound caused through animal practice such as uh, barbed wire cuts, castration wounds, uh, branding, ear tagging, all these create wounds. Even ticks, a tick bite on an animal is sufficient opening through the skin for the screw and fly to find that wound and to lay its eggs. To the untrained eye, the adult fly is unremarkable in colour and size. It looks similar to some of the common species of blowfly found in Australia. The body is dark blue, the head orange and the eyes burgundy. Females lay eggs on the dry edges of wounds. This usually takes place in late afternoon and evening. Up to 200 eggs are deposited. The female only mates once, but she can deposit more eggs at four-day intervals. The eggs are brilliant white, cylindrical and rounded at both ends. They are tiny, only just visible, and are cemented together in a shingle pattern, like a tiled roof. Depending upon the temperature, they hatch in 10 to 20 hours. There are three stages during the development of the larvae. In this first stage, the larvae are tiny. They move onto the wound and begin to feed superficially on the surface fluids. The term for this infestation of living tissue is myasis. The second stage is marked by an increase in size of the larvae. They will eventually grow up to 15 millimeters in length. They are white to cream in color. Notice the mouth hooks and the bands of dark spines that give the fly its name. In the third and most dramatic stage, 
The larvae have begun to enlarge and deepen the wound. They are liquefying tissue and rupturing blood vessels. The wound is hemorrhaging and producing a fluid with a foul odour. These tertiary stages of the screwworm fly myasis are the easiest to identify. Sometimes the size of your fist. They are deep and seized with larvae in a soupy fluid of liquefied tissue and blood. It is attractive to other female screwworm fly and common blowflies. The surrounding area is swollen and hot to touch. Mature larvae now wriggle from the lesion and drop to the ground. They burrow into the soil to a depth of two to three centimetres, turn upright and pupate. Depending upon the temperature, this pupal stage takes seven days, though cooler weather may prolong the process as much as 60 days. Males and females emerge in equal numbers. The males are sexually mature in 24 hours, the females in three days. The fly lives for about 15 days. <laughs>